Lord of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Straight to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. As we are noticing the things which are quite essential for us, not only to the so-called Christendom, even to the principalities and the powers in the realm of angelic conflict could realize and understand what is Bible doctrine and what are the privileges that Lord has given for us. The sole reason why we are into this alchemic catechism, new dispensation of the church age with the bona fide gift given by the head of the church who would in return communicate the word of the Lord not to use pulpit for an entertainment, but rather use pulpit for enlightenment and enrichment in the word of the truth. The reason behind the alphabets in the two words of enlightenment and entertainment is the same. It is equivalent to 13 alphabets. But the difference among that in the pulpit will definitely make an impact in your spiritual and social life. Because you're, as you design your spiritual life, so devoted you would turn out to Christ and to follow him. Not to become as a traitor. Not to represent as a person who doesn't have loyalty in him to stick on to the integrity of Bible doctrine. And in fact, even not to live like a stoic. The reasons were with religion gains the approbation before the Lord standing to think about on its own feet by doing good deeds and reason a life like stoicism and come and think that I have lived a perfect life is not what at all a life it is. A life derived by standing on the saving work of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and for me on the cross as a substitutory spiritual death because of the sin Sin before man, Adam and Eve could rebel, Satan rebelled against the Lord. The sin wherewith it knew very well the outcomes of that, it is going to end up into the lake of fire forever and forever. That's why it wants to change its complete strategy in this unique dispensation of the church age. We, the Gentiles who believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, having no difference between the Jew and the Greek or the Babylonian, having given this privilege to be joined and be occupied with Christ through the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit into union with Christ, positionally sanctified, made higher than the chief fallen angel known as Satan, and termed as church, and in return termed as body of Christ, which is going to appear on the judgment seat as resurrection. And in return we have been termed out as a royal family of God. Being given so great a privilege for you and for me, we do not even have any address of such why are we alive on this earth. If you were not known Christ, you would have spoiled your entire life either following stoicism, or rationalism, or empiricism, or Gnosticism, or the doctrine of the creed of Nicola Tynes or in fact even having an influence of Platonism in your lives. Because this were the contemporary Greek, Greek philosophers existing after the completion of canon of the Old Testament realm. The silent period when Lord kept quiet. This was the period of the so-called great philosophers of all time in this world could emerge. During that time, men thought it would be happy for us to sustain into our things as natural the things appear for us to use it. And they thought being happy with myself and with my fellow member is going to make me peace and my life to go to heaven. Where with in today's religion, the people are following to the core. If you could ask them what is life, they would say, believe in the Lord, not 
my Lord Jesus Christ, but their God, whomsoever they consider, the gods, small g, not capital G, and be good with the fellow men, do good deeds, easily we can go to heaven. But this man never know, never realize that salvation is free. This man will never know, never realize it is only the saving work of Christ on the cross. Is the only good work which Lord is going to recognize it for your salvation. This work they will never realize it is for that imputation of divine righteousness which is absolute standard of plus R which will be graciously credited for us only through a simple act of faith by faith alone in Christ alone. This man will never come to close to realize because Satan blinds their eyes. It gives them to fulfill their carnal and superstitious lusts to be completed, to be fulfilled. The sole reason behind that, as you a man, you will never come to have that God consciousness with the earnest zeal and desire what is the truth. Because foolishly these philosophers will say in their mythological thoughts as we are ready to take the life so we are ready to take the death. So what my philosophy is teaching me that is what I follow. Bible is no way a philosophy for you. Bible is the infallible and then inherent word of Bible doctrine of my Lord's word which is final. These people never want to know what is the truth because they don't want to come to listen what is the infallible and inner and God consciousness which we found in Bible doctrine. What is this free salvation given for us? In India, not only in India, any part of the world, if anyone could rush, if there is a tag given for the articles to be sold as free, I think the entire world will run for that. Because it is free, it costs nothing for you. When this salvation, which is so free, your attitude towards Lord Jesus Christ gives you this eternal life, which is the most valuable thing for you while you are alive in this world to realize. Because after your death, you will know once you have believed in Him, you shall have that eternal life. And when this tag has been given for you free, you discern this tag with the religion. You term it with such kind of a things wherewith you are not able to realize what are the depths of Satan. And you say, my God is great, so I follow him. My gods are greater, so I follow them. Those are not gods, not that G.O.D. God, because they are representative of Satan's. And they are representative of the principalities and the rulers and the powers and the authorities wherewith Satan has a systematic plan. And in fact, even as such, these foolish, arrogant preachers who are preaching in today's Christendom, rising to miracles, healings, or demon possession healings, are also agents of Satan. They never even know what is the truth. Because they have not known the inner and power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which indwells in us. Where in no way Satan even can close, even to touch you, except through the teachings of a false realm, which can have a doctrinal influence upon you, which is false. But a demon can never possess a believer. And these foolish people rise to the reasons into their mind and say, till he has been baptized of the Holy Spirit, demon possession will exist to him. What a sheer out of a blasphemy, not even knowing what is the power of the scripture. Not even having a love towards the Lord to understand that scripture. And this man foolishly, whom I count as worthless, vanity of vanities of the teaching, which couldn't even have a reason to reason which is more worse than the uselessness, are great ministers in Judas Christendom. You know what is the reason behind that? A blind man leading a blind boat will end up in ditch. But here a man who doesn't know the virgin language of the scriptures leading the other blind men who do not even have a love towards the Lord, who do not even have an endurance because of the apostasy which is falling very near into their lives and souls. They don't want to learn the truth. 
That's why they become a prey to the easy predator of false teachings. And these false teachers who call themselves as great miraculers or healers or speaking in tongues or in fact even demon possession healers, that's what they call. These are blasphemers and liars. As such, it is a simple fact. When you are singing a song, a lyric should not be a lie. How much more it has to be a preacher when he's preaching the truth in the pulpit. And how much more he has to stay to stick on to the pure word of the Lord rather than falling from the pure word of the Lord. When you are writing your lyrics, you say even a line which is of a lie is not fit to be sung, which is just vanish off in the moment of your thoughts when you sing. How much more Bible doctrine, the eternal word which is settled forever in the heavens and heavens ought to be told while you preach. But do you think your unadvised lips, what they are preaching, are not recordable? Each and every word justifies you or either condemns you or the judgment seat of Christ. Men are coming to the pulpit. They are not even aware of the fact whether they really have this bona fide gift given by the head of the church, which is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Men who do not know the law are coming and trying to handle the law with their errors not even having a thought of understanding what is dispensation. With their errors not even able to realize what was in the Old Testament time of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and what are we now? And that too in this church age, after the completion canon of scripture, what are the spiritual gifts that are into force? Force in the sense active, or now working or operating to edify the body of Christ, to make each and every man perfect and complete in the sight of the Lord. Why and what are the reasons that though we are Gentiles, we have been given this power to be energized by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who mightily works in us so that our human spirit could be energized by the word of the Lord because the human spirit cannot work without the energization power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And why is it a believer has been termed not to grieve, not to squelch Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but rather be controlled or ruled by the Spirit? And why it has been termed for us to tell always, to understand the spiritual phenomena, you need to be born again, to become trichotomous in nature. And when this salvation tag has been so freely, graciously given through Bible doctrine and through the evangelists to the entire world, if the nation has not been evangelized, why people are not running to get it? You know why? People are exact replica of the times of Joshua. In his dying declaration of Joshua chapter 24, the greatest affirmation, one of the Bible in the faith towards Jehovah. When he's having conversation with the tribes of the heads of the Israelites, he tells to them, either you serve to the gods of that flood or to the gods of this river or in the land which you are dwelling now that is left to you. Choose you this day whom you are going to serve. Because me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know why Jeho Joshua was enlightened into that word of the truth? And you know the response of the tribes of the heads, what it was? It's exactly the same response why the people, they are not able to believe in Christ. Why they are not able to keep Christ as their Savior. You know what is the reason behind that? People want Christ for the temporary sacrifices or the temporary sufferings to be elevated. They do not want to follow the Lord with all of their heart, soul, and mind, and strength. 
why they are following this Lord? Because my Lord is not working, so let me follow this Lord, so that this Lord can be giving a cure to me. So then the minister who is occupying in the pulpit, he says, you come to me for 10 months or 11 months, give me your offerings, give me your tithes, and then he says, you will be healed from this. And what do they want? As exactly the people of Joshua time, the Israelites, when they spoke, when they reasoned to Joshua, they say, we are not going to forsake the Lord Jehovah. What is the reason for that? If you could look the reason, you would laugh. That could be a reason for us even to cross-check. Is this the way that you want to follow the Lord? Or because of this you are following the Lord? The people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake Jehovah and serve other gods. For Jehovah is our God. He it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt. That means deliverance. Even in today's Christendom, if there are any Christians who call themselves as Christians, because there is a lot of difference between a true Christian and a false Christian. And there is a lot of difference of the pastors and the ministers who are preaching the word of the truth in the pulpit, giving them a tag of Christendom. Because these Christians never even know what is the difference to come out between a dichotomy nature and a trichotomous nature. They think, my father was a Christian, so I become a Christian and follow the church. But these people, they never even want to come close to realize. Because of the failure exactly of the replica of the man's mind, man's thinking, man's logic. That's why King David warned his son Solomon to tell. He told him, even the imaginations behind your thought, Lord knows. Lord knew very well how this man would turn up. That's why he gave them the free volition. Either which way you choose, left or right. Either which way you go. Will you go far from the word of the truth and serve false? Vanity of the vanities. A summarization of John 2.8. Those who forsake or those who observe the lying vanities forsake the mercy of the Lord. Or those who forsake the mercy of the Lord will easily observe the lying vanities of this world. So in fact, even here, the people of Israelites during the period of Joshua, they knew what they have come throughout. They are saying here, because Jehovah, our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt. And that land of Egypt was what? It was a bondage. Slavery. They could realize the temporary release or temporary relaxation from that bondage of slavery from out of the land of Egypt. But they could never realize what Lord wanted them to do. A work given for them to destroy the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Gibbizites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites. Because of that worship which was so evil in the sight of the Lord. Who rose these people? Exactly in today's Christendom, why are you believing upon the Lord? We say, they say, we have been delivered from the slave market of sin. And what next? You have been delivered at an instant by faith alone in Christ alone. Then what next? They are not even having a purpose. As such, these people became purposeless. And since they were surviving in the land of Amorites, in heart they were serving the gods of Amorites because they wanted a god who could be visible for them than an invisible god who could train them up. Even in today's Christian people, they want to follow the Lord because they could do miracles and healings of the power of the god. And they're not able to realize that sufferings have been given for us as a testing in the sight of the Lord. And these ministers who use this weakness of the men and use their superstitious fear call crusades as healing crusades. Call miracle as the only deliverance which the power of the Lord is there for us. But you know what? Lord has delivered you eternally by a simple act of faith. 
when you express your volition through faith alone in Christ alone. But you are not able to realize that eternal redemption of the Lord. Because you need to have a second working of grace. You need to have that enjoyment. You need to have that emotional ecstasy or feeling. As such, the Pentecostal crowd is running around. The fundamentals are practicing around. The charismatic people are performing around. And the ministers are propagating it around. Because they want to have that experience, experience of realization of their emotional ecstasy, experience of the fact that they have really enjoyed the grace of the Lord. And they say, I have been appointed or I have been anointed. They are not even able to realize there is nothing to do with anointment. Or you require once again filling or require once again fresh anointing. All these things are sheer out of blasphemy. As such, they could be temporarily relieved or relaxed. So it is. They follow these gimmicks. And catching hold of this weakness, because this minister doesn't know what is the purpose after salvation. What is the purpose when you express your faith alone in Christ alone? Because these people, they were not able to realize what, what, is, what was their target, what was their mission, what was their purpose. The people of Israelites, when they were delivered from the bondage of the slavery from the Egypt. Their purpose being to destroy these Canaanites, the Parasites, the Hittites, the Jebusites. Which Lord rose them as an army. But you know what? Ultimately, this they themselves failed to stand to the army of the Lord. What they could have achieved in 40 years, they took nearly 400 years when David was being raised to destroy the greatest army of all time known as Jebusites. Why? The reason that they could lost their sight from the word of the Lord. The reason they lost their sight from the faith of the Lord. The reason emotion became more rather than reality. The reason their heart being far, the lips being near to serve the Lord. That's what exactly it is happening today in today's Christendom. After you have been delivered from the slave market of sin, of your spiritual death, what is the purpose you have been kept alive? Did you realize that you have a mission to reach the state, great status quo of maximum glorification unto Christ by living a spiritual life? You are much more greater into a warfare than the war which the Israelites have been raised. Israelites have been raised to do a physical war, but we have been raised to do a spiritual war. The spiritual war wherewith you have been given all the equipments and the weapons. To go and to do a war. And when I search in the dying declaration of Apostle Paul, he tells to Timothy, Charge, I charge you more than eight times in the two letters of First and Second Timothy. Charge what it is. It is a military term. He says, You're not only a pastor, but you're a soldier of Christ. Charge means go and give strict orders not to compromise with the standards of this world, but rather to look into the standards of Bible doctrine. So this charge is the military warfare, word which Apostle Paul knows very well about that chronology or those terms when he was using and telling to Timothy, when he was such in Ephesus, one of the dangerous place of all time to serve as a pastor, one of the easiest place for a man to call himself as a pastor and fall into sexual immorality. Apostle Paul could win there because of the power of Lord Jesus Christ which was working in him, because his eyes were set upon Christ. He was completely controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in each and every decision that he took. That's why he could serve there in the Ephesus for more than three and a half years. And a dying declaration telling to them, he could find a change into their attitude towards Bible doctrine. When they wept, though they were such kind of unsexual immorals through the goddess of Diana, or the cults of then and then existed, 
He said, I did intend to declare the entire council of Bible doctrine. And to that same place now, Apostle is Paul is appointing Timothy and asked him to be faithful. Give them charge to the church wherewith you have been given. A charge like a military equipment. A charge like a military command. A charge for the great faith which Lord Jesus Christ told, I have not seen this faith in the entire Jews or the Israel which I have seen in the centurion. Why? He was a man of military. He knew what was the word of the Lord and the authority of that man who spoke that word. That is exactly the same term which Apostle Paul tells to Timothy. You charge them. And that word has been used eight times in those two letters to the pastoral one, which are not only for the pastors, but it is a reminder for each and every believer to be faithful, to be honest to the work wherewith he has been called for. So Apostle Paul knew very well what he was telling to him. And then he admonishes them, because they will fail, though you have given the charge, 32 times he uses the word teach, teachers, teacher, teaching and doctrine in those two epistles. 32 times which meant to say, did ask how to teach. And that's the duty of a minister, of a pastor, teacher, who is occupying the pulpit to teach. And God's ideal shepherd is a teaching pastor. Not a joking pastor, not an entertainment pastor, but an enlightenment pastor, and for their soul enrichment through Bible doctrine. Where which so much is given for us, so much has been expected from us. So after salvation, what? Are you aware you are into the spiritual conflict? Are you aware we are there, the unseen forces which are always fighting against us? Are you aware that you have been given all the defensive weapons and one offensive weapon which is Bible doctrine? The people of Joshua time, thank good Lord for temporary relaxation which is for the bondage of slavery out of Egypt. But they never knew what was the mission for them. What was the work given for them? Though they could lose their entire focus, but they couldn't lose some of the things till they could acquire those achievements through the war. But here in Christianity, today's ministers are burying this mission. They are burying, we are having a spiritual warfare. They are burying, not able to realize that we have been given the greatest weapons of all time. In this Alekene Ketesis, we have been given to turn out as the greatest ill which Lord is always been looking on path of a believer. When Lord could say in the book of Jeremiah, there is no one who could lay to the heart. But here, Lord says, for each and every one at the moment of salvation, I have given you these great assets of all time. Are you not aware what for you here? Are you still happy that you have been delivered from the slave market of sin? And then not realizing what is your mission and purpose in this earth. And you still want to live a life of a loser. Or you still want to be like those replica of ensembles given for us in the Old Testament time. When Joshua could tell and want to them, I will serve my Lord. Why? He, know, he knows very well that Lord has put foundation upon the mountain of holiness where he's standing for us. And that holiness not only requires your spiritual warfare to be done completely, that holiness demands that you walk in integrity of the truth for the Lord. At each and every breath you take, you represent the holiness of Christ. That's why the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has been given to us so that the indwelling trinity abodes in us. It is not a believer, it is the sanctuary of the Lord. And to approach that sanctuary of the Lord, yearly once the high priest would go, first confessing for his sins, because he knew very well, if he would be still sinful, Lord would never grant him the permission. But now we being the church, we are the tabernacle of the Lord. We are the Shekinah glory. We have been given that opportunity to go and glorify the Lord to the maximum. But what are we doing? Are you at least aware that we have a spiritual warfare a spiritual warfare wherewith the Israelites failed to destroy those Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Hittites. And are we 
in comparison to the spiritual warfare. Not able to destroy our own lusts, the pride of life, the lust of eye and the lust of flesh. And we are ready to do the will of the Lord until and unless you destroy your own old sin nature which has lost its power when you have been born again. Why you want to still be associated with that which is yielding you to the spiritual death or the deeds of your dead body what you are going to do. First you destroy these things and then you shall have victory. That's what Lord says. But we are not able to destroy our own walls in nature, our negative volition. We are not able to give top priority for biblical truth. And the reason behind that we are a failure is to realize the fifth phrase of the word which is spoke on the cross, I thirst. The reason wherewith it shows how marvelous and wonderful it is that Lord has kept his entire humanity realm in Bible doctrine. How great and worth it is for us to realize that Lord God the Father desires on part of each and every believer to have that same reverence, joy, realization and absorption of Bible doctrine into our souls. Through the energization ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit which it could in return train up our human spirit. Why are we still becoming failures not able to realize this truth? Is that the minister who has been occupying the pulpit is blind. He has not come even close to realize what is the truth behind that. To train the church in Bible doctrine. Since he is a failure, not able to realize this truth, a blind leading other blind, they are not even able to realize what is there from where they have been delivered. A deliverance from the slave market of sin and to eternal redemption. A deliverance to look into the spiritual warfare and to look and to participate in the spiritual warfare first. Your all sin nature activities to be dead which has lost its power at the moment of your second birth. That's why we have been told that we are clothed with Christ. That's why we have been told to perfect completion of Bible doctrine to be taught. That's why we have been told like an athlete we have to compete. Not with the power of your human strength, but with the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which has been clothed through Christ to indwell in you. So that we have been called as who has not technon. Technon meant an immature son which refers to the Jews, but who has represents to the church, who is capable of placing into this adoption by Christ. In the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being joined into the royal family of God. Adoption to a son who has been set apart to place in the higher standard. Where within this unique dispensation of the church age, we have been termed out for the toga varalis, adulthood of the man representing his toga varalis or virality of his manhood. We, the church age, are spiritual virality. And we have been here termed. To enter into our battle after the slave market of sin. And we are not even having a focus as such. What is that battle? That battle is angelic conflict in the spiritual warfare. Constantly being given for you. The two third of the archangels. Who could guard you. And tell you. To protect you. Learn Bible doctrine. Give top priority for biblical truth. And you have been termed out with an alec indicator. It is no spiritual in spaces. Never ever existed. In the past, never will exist in the future. You are so great and privileged in this uniqueness of the characteristics for the church given alone. But then do you know what is hindering us? Our negative volition to learn the truth. Our attitude of indifference towards the minister who is preaching you exegetical, categorical, psychological study. And above all, you know what? Our ignorance not to have time and say, I am busy to attain Bible class. And busy means being under Satan's yoke. Which simply puts in you a superstitious fears like those religion-minded people have, and say, weekly once go to church, give them the tithes, or pay them some bribe to the Lord so that he's going to protect you in your day duty and your night duty, and proclaim them through the minister so that the people can fear that minister and think weekly coming once to the church is enough. What for you are here? Are you not aware that you require a spiritual training to look and to participate in the spiritual warfare? And how can you be spiritually trained 
until and unless you give top priority for biblical truth. Until and unless you make the grace apparatus of perception as number one priority in biblical truth. Until and unless you give your volition for Bible doctrine. Until and unless you change your attitude in following Christ. Not for the temporary relaxation what he has given to you. As such, the morons of that Israelite spirit during Joshua, they reason with him and tell. We will never forsake this Jehovah and serve other gods, Jehovah, because our Jehovah, our God, capital G, capital O, capital D, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. This men, they are looking for this deliverance and they are happy. But they are not able to look to the focus. And you know what they are saying again? They say, from the house of the bondage they bought and with great signs before our eyes, we are shown what it is. But the only sign which Lord has done for us is the saving work of Christ on the cross followed through His resurrection, ascension and session, sitting at the right hand of God the Father. And we are greater than the one who could see that because we believe by faith. That's what John Gospel affirmed to the fact of Lord's word. We didn't see the resurrection of the Lord. We didn't see the ascension of the Lord. But we have a written word more sure than the physical appearance of the Lord. The people in India say if you keep a stone on the roadside, they will worship him as a God. That is not to the foolishness of them. It is the faith in them what they have in that stone. When these unbelievers who have been headed by Satan could do that, how much more we the believers in Christ, being following the living Lord can do by looking into this word. His word is sufficient for us to tell the truth. Because his word is settled in the heaven and his word will never perish though the heaven and earth will perish. That's what it stands written and we follow that. And that's why I'm proud to be an Indian. Not to have a prejudiced mind or predictionized mind, but to follow by faith. The faith in the living word of the Lord. The faith which we follow only through the written word of Bible doctrine. The great sign is for us the resurrection of my Lord. Our salvation is an accomplished fact. Doctrine says, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That's it. There ends the matter. A disciple alone in Christ alone. That's what Bible says. That's what we follow. We don't look for the works. Nor we try to do our works. To earn or deserve or work out our own salvation. And the ministers are representing falsely the glorious grace of my Lord. By saying that, you need to work out your own salvation. Failure to realize the culminative arrest which Apostle Paul writes to them. A life which has already been given, that is an eternal life, and you reflect it by your action, as such what you are living now. That's how you have been termed out for the spiritual resurrection, reaching to the status of spiritual maturity. Because ultimate physical resurrection which appears at the moment of rapture, before we could die, or after our death, at the trumpet blow. And we await for that. And how do we have assurance? Because of the pure word of the Lord. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not his word. How much more to be me like an Indian who is serving a living Lord, have such much of a faith in his word, and just imagine if my whole country, India, turns out to look to this living Lord, how much great we will be. And we are not foolish in our faith. As such many people think that as a roadway side, if you keep a stone, people will worship it. That's the love and faith and fear what we have towards a God, what they're having. But when they could turn out to be, true, to be for a true living Lord, just imagine how much more they can do. And Lord knows how they are and what they are in India. If they are in India, he knows how to raise them up. Because these are the men who are not born by the will of blood, by the will of flesh but by the will of Lord God Almighty. And Lord knows how to train them up, how to protect them, how to assist them. 
and how to become as the greatest unprofitable slave in the sight of the Lord who has worked his entire life. Though it costed him much. But he stick on to the integrity of biblical truth. That is what we are in Christ. We are not following because of the great signs. Like those Israelites who told a false representation about God to them. Not having fear towards the love of the Lord. But having an enjoyment of relaxation. Saying that we have seen the great signs and wonders of the Lord. So we follow him. So we will not forsake him. Why? If they could get again into trouble. Lord is able to deliver them up. <laughs> the standards of their foolish reason and their reasoning with Joshua represents today's Christianity as well. You know why? Because the ministers they are telling, you follow me, I am capable of praying to the Lord and Lord will deliver you from this. And since you have seen such kind of a great miracles in my ministry, you come and follow me because in the future if you have any problems, once again I am going to deliver you, but till that time you give me your money, wherewith I am interested to fulfill my lusts with your money. And not having a fear towards the true love of my Lord. And not even having a knowledge of the truth which has been written for us in the original Greek. The commandments which Apostle Paul meant to tell to Timothy saying that I charge you with this thing. A charge of a commandment of a military realm. And these people they are occupying the pulpit in numbers. And rising heresy in my country known as India. Of course, India, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Korea, all are demon possessed. But Lord knows in his time how to rise up a key man and to war and to prepare a war of spiritual realm only through the war of the truth. The greatest man who could eat India, Apostle Thomas. And then the very next greatest man, William Carey. And who is now in today's Christendom? Will you not evangelize or revolutionize the entire Christendom with biblical truth of exegesis? Will you not arise and thrash away your teachings in the pulpit and put a standard of government rule of the word of the Lord, which is exegesis, categorical, historical study in your pulpit? And which ought to be that. Not the signs and miracles as such these people that followed. Because those signs and miracles were been used before the completion of canon. In the pre-canon period of the church age. To show forth the sign of apostleship to them. And not today. And you know what the saddest thing. These people they call to them. Who are believers. And they are doing those miracles to the believers. But it is no way concerned to the believers. Even in the Old Testament time. Or in the pre-canon period. When Apostle Paul were performing this. That was done to the non-believers. And now if any miracles are happening. It is directly to God the Father. There is no mediator for them. Except you have a duty of an evangelism or a work of a missionary wherewith Lord agrees to your prayer if you are faithful and if that nation looks faithful or if that geographical location is faithful in the sight of the Lord to change and to be repented like the people of Ephesus or the people of the island of Malaysia or Malta which we call and where which in today's Christendom the way the technological and say that the island of Malta is one of an island for the aliens. And we have one more, another things to be thought, which is secondary for us about these aliens. But let first be true to our human beings, far less we can think of aliens and preach those alien sermons in the ceremony. Because when we are not aware what is your purpose in this world, why do you want to divert your topic towards the aliens and other scientific or technological ends and say cloning or XYZ in your ministry? Look on and stick on to the integrity of Bible doctrine. Look on to the truth. Hold on to this truth. And if you are not able to get the truth, dig the word from the original language of the scriptures. And you first pray a prayer unto the Lord to search you diligently, to know your anxious thoughts as well. Why are you coming into this ministry? To make profit? Just forget it. Ministry is not for profit. Ministry is not for to fulfill your lusts. Ministry is a lifetime achievement. After your death, you are going to receive rewards in escrow contract if you have fulfilled it at the judgment seat of Christ. 
Ministry is not what you enjoy now and call yourself as a ministry and beg, saying that we couldn't meet the needs of the, needs of the crusading meeting, so kindly donate us these things and that things. Who the hell has asked you to organize those crusades? You, st you first start teaching the word of the truth in your pulpit. And only for a male believer, never to a female. Because a female believer, believer is never a pastoress or reverend as us, recklessly, which are extravagant to the core and senseless in today's Christendom, trying to have authority over the men. And you know what they call such kind of a great woman are preaching in the entire world. Why is it that me, as a woman, not able to preach in the pulpit? Even they were like during this period of illness, disobeyed for the word of the Lord. Lord granted them, and ultimately what followed? The wrath of Lord followed for them when they were granted. Exactly here, the wrath of the Lord is what? Apostasy, being followed. And a woman, when is having authority, or when she is having authority over the man, what she is? She is satanic to the core. And that ministry is Satan. Karam, that's what Lord tells to them. Devote to destruction. And Lord crashes them out. Or scratches them out saying this ministry is not worth. You may be helpful or thankful to the entire world that are following you. But no way in her Mansus can come close to touch the parchments of the Old Testament time, far less you could catch and handle this entire word of the truth when she's preaching in the pulpit. A woman can never have this illogical reason in their mind by comparing Galatians, stating to the fact there is no Jew, no Greek, no male, no female, that it meant to say to the spiritual life, that it meant to say to the salvation, that it meant to say to the resurrection, which is an accomplished fact, to less tie in the Greek. Salvation commonly given for male and female. Spiritual life is also commonly given for a male and female to execute and reach to the status of maximum glorification of the Christ. And resurrection is an accomplished fact. This keeping in mind, Apostle Paul wrote, not keeping in mind, telling to them, even you as a woman can preach and have authority over the man. As foolishly these people are rising forgetting the instructions given to them through Apostle Paul in the book of Timothy. A woman is beautiful when she is in subjection towards a right man because a right man being subjection to the Lord learns Bible doctrine and trains her up. Adam failed in his duty not sticking loyal to the word of the truth but just lusted for her beauty. He knew cognizantly what he was aware of doing. And he failed. Even to this Christendom, pews are being occupied with such kind of a members of believers. Cognizantly, they are aware a woman should not preach. But thinking that they could gather some huge money. They are raising such kind of an heretic heresy in the moment. If a woman wants to preach, it should be the greatest miracle of all time. You know why? Our, genetic, our genetical system should be totally changed. Her female part should be replaced by a male part so that she could not have that menses again. Then she can come and preach. And if that alteration has been occurred to you, and if you think that you are a preacher now, because of that, systems have been totally changed, then you can come and occupy the pulpit. When that is no way possible and which is unrealistic to sound, then take it granted what Apostle Paul told for you in Second Timothy and First Timothy as well. No woman can preach and have authority over the man. That's it. That ends the matter. This is real Bible doctrine. This is the dogmatic truth. Whether you like it or follow it or not, a woman has never been given this bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to have control over the church. Far less you think to attract crowd you can call woman. Or you think to raise funds you can call woman. 
to make profit, you are coming to the ministry. Greater the man who led their life, working for the glory of Lord, rather than working for the glory of you on this earth. Apostle Paul was the greatest example of all time for us to, who come to preach the word of truth in the ministry. He said, my reward is laid in heaven. You know why? He said, I didn't even covet a single piece of silver or gold from you. If you could tell that today, it is money. If that he would have taken, his reward would have not been so great what he says. And what he was, in return, he was adapted to teach you the truth, to tell you the gospel. And it is woe unto me, he said, if he's not preaching. How many of them they are occupying the pulpit today can tell these words? It is woe unto you if you are not preaching exegesis, categorical and isagogical study of the word of the truth. But you know what? It has become totally a contrary. Satan knew it cannot come close to the Bible doctrine, so it is obscuring Bible doctrine with such kind of a false teachers rising them to the pulpit. And telling them they have the power of healing, telling them they have the power of XYZ, telling them they have power of miracles, and ruining the entire Christendom, making them to fall away in the nature of apostasy from the pure word of the Lord, which is in the original Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. And making them to follow with great signs and wonders. That's what they call. But those great signs and wonders were been seized off in 1896. And transformed after the completion of canon into only three or four categories of spiritual gifts. Number one, teaching shepherd. Number two, evangelist. Number three, the gift of hospitality or administration gift. And number four, the gift of helps to propagate the missionary work to train up the pastor teachers who are having this gift of a pastor teacher to be supported by the church for them. Missionaries have never been intending to work on their own because they, have been, they ought to be supported by the church. And the church offerings ought to be given for that. And that church is a blessed church which is raising missionaries to send them to train the pastor teachers in return. But today's churches are not able to fulfill their own lust and stomach Stating to the fact, for my name I want to build this church. Changing the alteration of the building. And telling that we can keep as a basement for car parking. And the first floor for the service. And the second floor for the Bible college. And the third floor for the receptionist. Who the hell wants from such kind of a church to be there. A church is a place for ground and pillar of biblical truth. A church is a place where the missionaries are being trained up and sent forth. But this man will never realize because of their lusts and for their own glory in the sight of men rather than glory in the sight of God. That's why they beg donations to construct the church. Not to construct the edification complex of the soul of a believer who is occupying there and recognizing their gift and sending them to do and to rise up a revolutionization of biblical teaching in the churches. They will never even realize what is there in the original Greek for the fourfold and fivefold work of a pastor teacher mentioned in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. He is there mentioned so that he can train up the congregation so that each and every man can take a part into this ministry for the edification of the church. And that part of the ministry is raising missionaries who are capable of handling this torch when they have been given this torch. Not to look and follow with signs and wonders and miracles. As such, the Jews foolishly claimed before Joshua and told, We follow him, we will not forsake him because of his great signs and wonders when he has brought us out of Egypt. In today's Christendom, the average decadent clergy is also raising the same issue, saying that we have a true living God who is going to heal us. Of course he is going to heal you. Because he has done that. But he has given you the greatest heal for your spiritual realm. By a simple act of faith. And he has told. Through his physical resurrection as well. After his death. 
of his voluntary spiritual death, that's what we can call. A statement of fact that you also will be resurrected if you die in Christ, that is believing in Christ. And that death is not called as a death but a sleep. A fallen asleep in Christ. And what more great sign you require then you have the spiritual heal if you are suffering with your physical illness no need to go and follow such kind of a jackass minister who calls is doing the miracles or crusades or healings if your mind is set right look on and stick on to biblical truth know whether it is Lord's will for you why he is putting you suffering like the job rising him cancerous boils why he was testing him Without suffering, there is no pleasure for you to reach to the crown. An exemplified exemplification right from the beginning of Moses, a period of the Old Testament time. Through Christ, before cross, before crown, what came? Cross. Even you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, though you are into the spiritual warfare, you will have that suffering. And that suffering could be overcome by the problem-solving devices. Number one, to be occupied with Christ. That is personal love towards God so that you can show for the impersonal love and providential preventive suffering could get you out. And your doctrinal status quo is cognitive self-confidence in the first stage of your adult life. And the second stage of your problem-solving devices is what? To be occupied with Christ or to share the happiness of Christ. And the doctrinal status quo is cognitive independence. And your momentum testing of suffering will be elevated by Lord. He knows how to get it out when you're having that cognitive independence in the word itself. And to your third stage, when you come down by passing that second stage as well, where with the first stage being termed with spiritual self-esteem, and then followed with spiritual autonomy. And then the third stage, your doctrinal status quo is cognitive invincibility. And your problem-solving device is what? Being occupation with Christ. And your testing is what? Your evidence testing either towards the plan of God or towards your own life. When you pass down this with the ability given to you with doctrine, which is cognitive invincibility, and the ability wherewith you have been occupied in Christ, that makes the difference. Occupying in Christ with the doctrine, but not with the signs and miracles. That's what it is going to give you maximum glorification unto Christ. Then you have been termed out as a winner believer or an invisible hero in Christ. And to reach that status quo, Apostle Paul told in Philippians 3, 12, as if I have not yet attained to that spiritual resurrection. I have not yet attained to the status quo. That's why I'm forgetting those things which are behind. And I'm looking ahead to run and get and achieve my status quo in Christ. He didn't say, I'm running for these miracles or healings to be saved. What if you could have a good health? And if you're not producing or fit to the warfare of spiritual realm, what is the worth and what you will do with that health if God has given you? Will you take care of your wife and children or get another marriage and raise some children and be happy in your physical realm? Even dogs and pigs are giving birth. But try to give a birth for a spiritual son through your ministry who, could, who is capable of being faithful like Timothy under the hands of Apostle Paul. Though he was born to a Greek and to a Jew, a Greek father and a Jew mother. He was en entitled to stand to the ministry of Apostle Paul to carry the torch. That meant to say no racial discretion. Even in the church, it is the word of the Lord which is going to raise you up. It is not stating to the fact that if a father is a pastor, his son also ought to become a pastor the believers in the pews who follow him faithfully are spiritual sons and daughters for him in his ministry. And for their account is responsible to show forth at the judgment seat of Christ, personally handling him how, down before Christ and saying that this is the one who I have been trained up. But Lord knew very well in his omniscient and his omnipotent knowledge what he has done to them. But since he has been given to your ministry, you are responsible for the flock. That's why I write pastor teacher to the right congregation. And if you have been termed or invited to such kind of a ministry wherewith you will be 
worked out with signs and miracles, then never go to that. Because the people of Israelites failed because of that thought in their mind. And then they say, Lord has preserved us in all the way wherein we went. The third clause. In fact, even in the Christianity of today's Christendom, I have been giving thight to the Lord, so has been preserved me. I have been regularly attending the church, so Lord has preserved me. Lord preserved them because of the grace. Lord preserves you if he has a plan for you in your life. Concerning him, then he will surely preserve you. Only when you are growing grace, and God gives more grace to the humble believer who wants to learn Bible doctrine. And if you are not even having towards the learning of Bible doctrine, though you are a minister, Lord knows how to knock you out. A minister, not only a pastor, teacher, even in the political sense. By your good deeds, you think you are rising to the core. If you do not have humble grace enough to learn Bible doctrine, Lord will knock you out. Do not ever consider Lord is preserving you because of your good deeds to so many millions of people under your care. If you are not having humbly grace enough to learn the truth, no matter what you are, Lord will easily know how to erase you from this earth. So these people were having a false impression because Lord has preserved us from all of our ways, so we are not going to forsake Jehovah. So if you go to a pilgrimage tour for Jeshulam and call that holy city and stating to the fact without doctrine in your hearts and souls to appreciate where Lord Jesus Christ walked to look into the integrity of his word and say that I have been there so I will be preserved now. Are you going to become an immortal one then and there itself? Or are you going to survive for another 2000 years in this earth? whom you are kidding with, with your false representation, stating to the fact, if we go to Jerusalem or some other holy city, Lord is going to preserve us. And you will be called as a saint, and you will be considering yourself, what an exalted privilege it is for me to go to Jerusalem by occupying so much of money, but not able to realize. With that money, what you are sending or spending there, first if you could sit and le learn the word of the truth, getting the best lexicons, getting the best word of the truth, that will definitely edify you in your spiritual realm. Then you can appreciate if you go to Jerusalem or any other tour because of the grace of the Lord. Though you have been left or walking through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord knows how to preserve a person who is an humble believer, who is subject to humility and for whom God has a plan to be purposed, to be fulfilled. And Lord knows when it is for a dying grace how to take them out. And prior to that, the things of warning disciplines given by God, if you are out of fellowship with Bible doctrine, first, a warning discipline, staring to the fact, correct yourself and give top priority for biblical truth. Second, intensive discipline. Though so many warnings have been given, you will be taken to the point of death and will release you. At least that time you should realize that you have to give top priority for biblical truth. And then to you, if you neglect the second warning, then the third warning, which is sin unto death. Literally willing to die in your lust pattern rather than coming back and serving the Lord. No matter what best health you have, what best medicine you have, there is none that can preserve you. Because the grace of the Lord is not upon you. That's the way these people failed. They thought Lord preserved them and they enjoyed the grace of the Lord in those 40 years of wilderness. And Lord is going to do that when we confess our sins and we pray back to Lord as such because of that water point or revelation against the water or for the meat or for the cravings of their lusts. Lord could save them or for the gulf Lord could save them when they repented. They thought keeping that in mind but they never thought that the Lord is going to become a holy Lord and to follow his standards it requires above all integrity than what your soulish mind and spirit can think. These people were real failures to enjoy the grace of God in vain. Never realized that Jehovah was a holy God and he is a jealous God. They failed 
that rule. No, that principle. Even as such in today's Christendom by these false ministers that are representing my Christ, as the thoughts of these Israelites have been given for us as an admonition. The failure to realize the spiritual warfare, the failure studying to them to look again unto those signs and wonders and follow Christ, the failure telling to them, if you give tithes, if you give your time, Lord is going to preserve you. And then, they say, He did great signs before our eyes and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the fourth condition, they say, And Jehovah drove out from before us all the peoples and the Amorites, the inhabitants of the Lord. So therefore we will serve Jehovah, for he is our God. So for these four conditions, the fourth one, Jehovah drove out from before us all the peoples. And you know today's average minister what is telling for them in the pulpit? You come to Christ, your all sufferings will be elevated. So come to Christ. If you are not having children, Lord will give you children. That's what they say. This average blasphemous ministers being occupied in the pulpit. They say, come to us, Lord is going to dry out all your fears and worries and cursings. Of course, Christ has done that on the cross. And giving children, it is God's will. Because they are an heritage from the house of the Lord. It is not through this minister who is blasphemously telling to them. But this Israelites followed him saying, Since Jehovah drove out the Amorites, we are going to follow him. Never occupied with the person of Christ. Never occupied thinking that if Christ is there in them, all these things are possible. As such, even today's Christendom ministers who are preaching the truth, as such what it looks to them as called as truth from the translations, never they are looking into the fact. It is not for they come into Christ, or what benefits they will come from Christ, that they have to follow Him. But rather, they come unto Him for only one thing, to be occupied with Christ, to take His mind into their hearts and souls. Because first, they should realize what they are in Christ. What it is to be occupied in Bible doctrine. Then all these silly reasons are such, the people of Joshua time, the Jews and the Israelites told to them, right from the beginning, number one, deliverance from bondage, not able to realize for the physical warfare they have been delivered, exactly in today's Christian of analogy, we have been delivered from the slave market of sin for what? For the spiritual warfare. Number two, for signs and wonders. Not able to realize Lord is going to do greater signs and wonders for them through their lives and show forth to the entire world that they are here to destroy this evil worship and rise the nation known as Israel. But in return, this army failed. Even in the church age, we have been told not to look to the signs and wonders and follow such kind of a foolish cultic activities. But rather the greatest sign he has given is resurrection. Look unto that resurrection. Look unto his righteousness. And follow the work wherewith you have been called for to stand faithful. Till to your last breath. And number third reason they gave. That Lord has preserved us from all of the way. Yes, Lord would have been preserved them. If they would have achieved. In faith to follow. And get that Jerusalem where the Jebusites were there. And even we have been preserved in the grace of the Lord. Provided we are humble enough to grow up in Bible doctrine for which you have been kept alive. For which you have been told to grow up in His grace and in the word of the truth. And not to follow these cheap gimmicks. As such, giving tithes, where tithes is nowhere mentioned in the New Testament, Lord is going to preserve me. If you give humbly unto the Lord your monthly income, Lord is going to preserve you. If you are coming weekly once to the church, Lord is going to preserve you. Or in fact, if you are friendly and not cheating others in your morality, Lord is going to preserve you. Like the Stoics doctrine. 
No way, brethren, in the spiritual realm. Lord gives more grace to the humble believer. Lord knows when is our death going to approach. But before that, in our pilgrimage tour, we have to grow up to the status quo of spiritual maturity, the status quo of spiritual resurrection, wherein Apostle Paul told, as if I have not yet attained, I am still to attain it. When such kind of a great apostle or bond slave of man could tell those words, what are you and me in the sight of the Lord to repeat or to utter those words again? That's why he said, you cannot follow Christ. At least look unto me and follow as I am following unto Christ. The preservation for our rich status quo to be reached, Lord knows how to preserve us. And the fourth point, since Lord drove out these Amorites, we are going to never forsake this Jehovah. And when you come back, why Lord drove them? Because of his promise which has given to the Genesis, to the period of Abraham. Or to establish that dynasty through David in the future realm. But here in this time he was the Abrahamic covenant which he mentioned. Now what Lord is going to drive us out in his Christian arm? He has drove out all our fears, all our enemies. All our worries, all our infirmities, all our sickness. Because of that he has been striped and we have been healed, says Isaiah 53. He draw out everything which could become a failure or a trap for us to learn and listen the word of the truth. But you know what? Though Lord has drawed out everything at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, by imputing to us 39 irrevocable and one revocable, which is filling of the Spirit, or controlling power, ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we are still yet not to drive out our own lusts, our own sin nature, or even the desires of our own sin nature. And we are yielding to that. Though Lord has given them the freedom, they have seen that and they said, we are not going to forsake the Lord because he drove out our enemies. But what are we doing? We are easily forsaking the Lord and we are not able to drive out our enemies from our soul, which is pride of life, lust of flesh, and lust of eye. At least for that reason, we could give them some grace marks during the period of Israelites when they were risen with Joshua. Because they could have no freedom in the land of Amorite, they said, we are not going to forsake the Lord. But since you are having the spiritual freedom wherewith you have been told to stand forth in the liberty wherewith the Lord has set you free, and not sow to the wind and rip war wind, but rather sow to the seed of Bible doctrine and rip your fruit, which is not possible to sow that seed until and unless you are being rebound with 1 John 1 9 and be controlled of the Spirit and make your land a fertile land as told in the parable of the sowing of seed. The three parts of that four part of the land was failure. Only one part was fertile, so it could yield the fruit. This man never realized the truth. We are not able to drive out our lust patterns. And we are becoming a failure. Though Lord has drawn out all our sickness, all our infirmities as well and is placing us to the adoption wherewith we can cry with the vociferation, Abba Father, what do you realize that you are yours, and how much more you realize you are no more a technon in Christ. But you want to become still paideia and technon like a infant babies, not to grow up and take that responsibility to becoming, to grow up as a spiritual adulthood, and in our experience, we are still spiritual in fancy. Because we are not able to realize that we are superiorly higher at the moment of our positional sanctification in Christ. And when Lord drove out all those things and has given us perfect healing, perfect health, perfect spiritual wealth, which is the source of Bible doctrine, we are still following these miracles. We are still following these healings. And those ministers who are occupying are making money of that. Telling that Lord is going to preserve you when you come to my ministry. When you give me tithe. When you come to me and get prayed from me, you are going to have a miracle in your life, a healing in your life. Or you come and sponsor my program, you shall have peace in your life. All such kind of 
she are what of traitors who are calling themselves ministers to Christ are maximum into this Christian who are not shepherds who are butchers driving them pulling them taking them for the butchery of the rest of contract of spiritual life dear brethren the grace of our Lord is free you know why though these were the failures grace always precedes judgment Joshua tells to them in the verse of 19 of the 24th chapter you cannot serve Jehovah with this attitude you cannot come to Jehovah because Joshua knew very well that is not the way you approach the Lord that is not the way you approach a false ministry stating to the fact he is going to deliver you from your bondage stating to the fact he has preserved you and given you all those things with signs and wonders and in fact even stating to the fact of the fourth one Lord draw out with this you cannot serve Jehovah with this attitude you cannot come to become a spiritual warfare and serve Jehovah the reason behind that is very simple dear brethren because he is a holy God and a jealous God he will never forgive your transgressions nor your sins as such your transgressions and your sins in the sight of the Lord are not to learn his word your transgressions and sins are a seed plant for apostasy falling away from the pure word of the Lord since you do not know the pure word of the Lord how you are going to come and serve my Lord how we will realize that my Lord is a holy one as Isaiah realized in his realm he said warn to me in they said I am guilty but Lord said I have healed you do not fear then he was prepared to come because he knew though he was a prophet of a time what sin he was there in him a sin of living among these unclean lips deceiving lips with their fair talk when he has seen the holiness of the Lord and his care as when such Peter looked he said master go away from my ship I am a man of a sinful realm what a faith of repentance to him not followed because of those fish which he has been given by putting them to put on this side of the boat so that you will not be able to take or for the things which he has done but a realization of his holiness a realization of his integrity of absolute standard of righteousness and justice wherewith it compromises both together into one realm blends to form the holiness of the Lord and when Lord demanded that sort of purification on the part of Isaiah the prophet that sort of repentance or subjection of humility from the part of Peter how much more you and I can think we are able to serve the Lord with our transgressions and sins not able to realize that he is a jealous Lord who has told us to exegue by the word of the truth and still we are playing gimmicks with his word in the ministry dear brethren time is very short the burden kept upon our shoulders is very big how many days more you want to still be a failure in the sight of the Lord Joshua reprimanded them with the fact you cannot serve Jehovah with this attitude and in today's Christendom if you are listening to this tape sitting in a pew you cannot serve Jehovah with the attitude for his deliverance because of your flexible and easygoing life on this earth you cannot serve Jehovah because he has delivered you from the slave market of sin you cannot serve Jehovah because of the signs and miracles being performed in their ministry and you are called forth to show you cannot serve Jehovah because you have been given tithes and you are regularly attending the church weekly once 
so that is going to preserve you. You cannot serve Jehovah because he's able to drive you out all your fears, worries and anxieties in your life. And you cannot serve Jehovah until and unless you realize that his absolute righteousness and justice, which is come to become his holiness, to be met. And you cannot serve Jehovah until and unless you cannot forget to realize that he is a jealous Lord. That jealous Lord who didn't spare his born son and sent for you and for me as a substitute spiritual death on the cross, who left his son on the cross when he cried a greatest cry of the fourth phrase, Eli, Eli, lama sabachani. How much more you think, without having a proper knowledge, proper rule, proper method to worship the true Jehovah, you think in your transgressions and in your sins, Though by giving tithes, he is capable of taking those things. Do you think Lord is there for your money? Hell with your money. Lord is looking for his holiness and for his jealousness in the ministry. And as long as you fail to this, take this heed of information to your mind, dear brethren, there is no way that you can serve my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in your pulpit. Since you are becoming a failure not to exegete the truth, you cannot handle this truth. But Lord is gracious and is going to give more grace to the humble believers who want to know that we are here to serve the Lord for His holiness and because since He is a jealous Lord, we have to serve Him with the jealousy of sticking to the integrity of biblical truth. Lord will provide you more grace, more time. But as long as you are alive in this world, and if you are following still those cheap gimmicks, as such, the people of Israelites told to Joshua, stating to the fact, because of these four solid reasons, we will never forsake Jehovah. Joshua told to them very clearly, you cannot serve Jehovah. Because it is not the yieldings of your work which you see in Christ and coming, but the yieldings of your transformation, of renovation, of your thinking in mind which should take place so that you can stick on to that integrity of biblical truth. Those people failed by a strong recommendation by Joshua. And today, what you are in Christ, if you are not able to judge it, if you are not able to confirm it to your thoughts of your ministry, then once again ask Lord whether you are right into the ministry or not. And if you think a woman can come and serve you, Lord help you. Because you will never be faithful to his word. Though such kind of a reprimandation given to you, if you are not able to correct, Lord help you. Because for each and every deed that you do in a ministry, apart from exegetical, categorical, historical study, and turning out to become a teaching shepherd, the Lord help you. And if you are a believer in Christ, coming to Christ only for the sake of your physical lust or physical elevation from your suffering, then Lord help you. Because we are here for Christ to serve for His glory. And if you are not able to meet those standards of His glory, then Lord help you. So since the introduction of the tape has been too long, we shall have a word of prayer and once again review what is sharing all Christ has and what we have in Him. So Father, we are thankful for the privilege that I given to us to our fellowship with you through Thy Word. We pray that God the Holy Spirit and let us the things as we are going to study further. Since it has been a long time that we have not prayed. So Father, we are praying it now so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified the things that are going to study. May, so that you can become a source of blessing and challenge. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. So, com co coming to the previous tape of yesterday's one, sharing what Christ has all and what he has in us. As the mechanics of positional sanctification in a review, the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit causes the Christian to share in all Christ has and is. Every member of the royal family of God shares Christ's election, his destiny, his sonship, 
his hardship, his priesthood, his sanctification, his royalty, his righteousness, and his eternal life. Divine righteousness and eternal life are necessary for the relationship with God. To live with perfect God forever, man needs God's own righteousness and God's own life. And without his own righteousness, of our God's own righteousness, we can never have anything to do with God. These people, in the time of Joshua, they also failed to look for the absolute standard of God's own righteousness because he is a holy Lord and he is a jealous God. The people failed to look unto it, so they thought only by these things what he has done to our life, like the other gods of the Egypt which they were hearing, they would have done to them. They said the same comparison with Christ and told, because of this we are going to follow. But Joshua told to them with a strong recommendation, you cannot serve Jehovah. Even as such in today's Christendom, the people they are thinking because of the deliverance from slavery, de deliverance from financial problem, deliverance from their health, deliverance from their problems, they are going to serve the Lord. As such, even the other people, gods, they are serving, but not able to realize the principle behind that, that it is his righteousness which demands for us to be attained. Not any other things apart from that. They failed it. They couldn't achieve it. So you also cannot serve the Lord. And you are coming to the ministry for making money. Forget it. Never you can serve the Lord. You are here to preach his word as a teaching shepherd and only to a male believer, never to a female. So that perfect righteousness has been required. That God's own life has been required. These blessings therefore are inherent in salvation in every dispensation. Old Testament believers were given the righteousness of God and eternal life through imputation rather than through union with Christ. This is what the most important differentiation which we have in this church age. We have been termed out as alakaniketesis. This imputation which has been given to them for the Old Testament times, but now in Christ, every church age believer receives this divine righteousness and eternal life by imputation and by union with Christ. That's what it makes the difference. We have been united and baptized into the royal family of God. Many people fail to realize the simple dogmatical truths. That's why they are becoming failures in the sight of the Lord. So, as told in 2 Corinthians 5.21 and 1 John 5.11, the imputation and the divine righteousness of eternal life with the union of Christ is what we become to the spiritual blessing of spiritual royalty. And one vivid description of Lord God, the Holy Spirit baptism contrasts the church and the Israel to teach the church age believers position in Christ. Paul draws an analogy of the custom of adoption practiced by the Roman aristocracy. Adoption, which you have noticed in yesterday's tape, which meant to say, to place above the law wherewith you have been given. So Roman adoption officially designated someone as an heir, whether or not that person was related by blood. The Caesars usually adopted successors who were not their sons. Often, however, a father would adopt his own son, granting him the full privileges and responsibility of the family name. The ceremony also marked the boy's transition into adulthood. Traditionally, at age of 14, Paul depicts Israel as an immature son, as told in Galatians 3.23, which is technon in the Greek, the church as an adult son, which is huios and hair, as told in Galatians 3.25-26, because we have been clothed ourselves with Christ. At this dramatic moment of the Roman ceremony of adoption, the new hair is clothed with the magnificent toga viralis, the garment of manhood. And Galatians 3.27, for all of you who are baptized into Christ, the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, have clothed yourselves with Christ. And we Christians were the spiritual equivalent of the toga viralis from the moment of salvation. When the baptism of the Spirit occurs through the merits of Christ, every church age believers are adopted as adult sons of God and joint heirs with Christ at the first instant of faith in him as told in Romans 8, 16 through 17 and Ephesians 1, 5. Although a spiritual infant in experience, every church age believer is a spiritually adult in positional through positional sanctification. He has been granted the full privilege to become and he is positionally superior than the chief fallen angel, Satan, at the moment of salvation. And he has been fully granted the privil full privileges and responsibilities of an adult son of God because his union he is in union with Christ through the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Many people who are occupying the pulpit never even come close to realize this truth because they don't even know the technological terms given to them to be conformed to the image of Christ through the positional sanctification because in church age, believer is positionally superior to all angels, including the chief fallen angel known as Satan. And Satan never wants you to know, to this, know, know this truth because if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. That's why it rises the cults like Zakir Naik or Sheikh Ahmad Didat, even in our Christian believers who are occupying in the pulpits who come up with these various thoughts and interpretations rising to our 2700 denominations and not able to realize what is the truth in the original languages. They have some error in the truth and they come and they have a debate because, but they will never go and dig the truth from the original languages of the word. That's why they become 
failures. And these things which are so good and essential for us, particularly to continue in the dispensation of the study, though in these unique characteristics of the church age, given for us the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and the protocol plan of God, the mystery doctrine, the portfolio of invisible assets, the equality factor, the royal commissions, the unveiling of the Trinity, the availability of the divine power, which is the absence of the period in the church age, but rather historical trends and invisible heroes, we shall continue these things tomorrow by studying at the completion of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in depth, in a review, and then we start up with the protocol plan of God. So these things we shall continue tomorrow, and answering back Zakir Mike is not a big deal, because we are here first to be trained up for the glory of the Lord. To serve the Lord, we need to know what is our holy Lord and what is his jealous God. And these closing movements are dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, without eternal life, so that believing upon the Lord by a simple act of faith, by expressing their volition, to be believing in Christ gives them that salvation of life, wherewith his attitude determines after salvation, either you walk in a trichotomous as an enemy to God or a friend to God. And if you want to become a friend to God, you cannot serve Jehovah with these attitudes because of your deliverance from slavery, of your protection of signs and wonders, or your preservation, or driving out those enemies into your land, but with an attitude of true righteousness wherewith to serve the Lord demands your eternal and spiritual growth. These things we shall continue tomorrow. So Father, we thank you for the privilege that we given to us to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that God the Holy Spirit enlightens the things that we have studied so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. At the same time, Lord, we thank you for the recommendation given for us through those four strong verses of Joshua saying that you cannot serve Jehovah if you are a failure to become a holy one and a jealous one. 